Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. Before I get into relationships, I'd like to introduce you to lightweight migrations in Swift data. This is the fourth video, but the first in this section. We'll learn how powerful Swift data is and how it can handle some pretty significant changes to your models without you really having to do much at all. And your users won't lose any data. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. You may recall in the second video when we changed our rating property from being a status enum to the status is raw value, which is an int, our app crashed. This is because our data model made a significant change and our backend model container did not know how to deal with it. At the time, I mentioned that we'd need to perform a migration if we wanted to keep our existing data on our phone. Well, before I get into relationships, which will require changing our model structure, I want to introduce you to Swift data migrations. If you're following along with me, you can continue on with your project from video three. If not, please download the completed project from the current branch for this project's repository. And that's the third video underscore dynamic query and sort branch. I'll leave a link in the description. For this video, I've started a new branch for lightweight migrations. Also, I want to make sure that you have at least three book entries in the app when you run it on the simulator. Now, I'm going to be adding a new property to my book model so that I can track who might have recommended that book to me. Well, I can do this in two ways. I can create a property as an optional string, or I can create it as a string and give it a default value like an empty string when I create a new book, as we did with summary. I'd like to show you how making the choice has an impact on your development. So we're going to do both. But in order to check the differences, though, I want to be able to revert my data store back to its original state at the beginning of this video after I show the first of these implementations. So make sure you run your project and locate the location of the three My Book files that are stored in the application support directory. Stop the application then and copy those three files into a separate location on your computer so we can revert back to them. So let's open the book model file and add a new property to our book model. And I'm going to make it an optional string. I'm going to add a new optional string parameter to the initializer with the same name and set it to nil so that we don't need to provide a value for it when we create our previews. And then we'll set it self.recommended by to this property. Let me run the application. Fantastic, no crash. It runs just fine. So let's take a look at the database now in our SQLite browser app. When I go to browse data and check out our book table, I see that the new recommended by field has been added and all of our records have been assigned a null value. That's great. I didn't have to do anything. This is known as a lightweight migration. And Swift can add new properties if the property is optional. And we have a default value of nil, so all of our current records were assigned a value of nil to that property. Well, what if, however, we didn't want to use nil for this object when we create our new books, and we want to assign an empty string as we did for summary? Now, our database has already been updated with our last run with that optional value, so we'll need to revert back to the original data store. So delete that modified set of files in the application support directory and restore them back to those ones that we had just copied just previously. So let me return to book model and I'm going to change recommended by to a string, not an optional string. Then in the initializer, I'll set recommended by to be that non-optional string and assign it a default value of an empty string in that initializer. And that's different from nil. Let me run once more. This time the application crashes. And if I open that database and navigate to our table, 
we'll see that the property wasn't added at all. So no modifications have been made to the database. It just crashed. Well, remember what I said in the last case? When recommended by was nil, it had a default value of nil. So how can we use that knowledge in this model? Well, all is not lost. The issue is how we have set up our model and our initializer. This initializer is used when we create a book in our application or in our previews, but not when the app launches and it finds that there's a new property. It doesn't check out that specific initializer. It crashes right away. Well, the solution is to set the default value at the source where we declare the property and not just in the initializer. And this is going to be really super important when we start looking at CloudKit. And this is very significant, but more on that in a later video. We can leave our initializer as is because that will give us an option of specifying a different value recommended by when we create our new preview data. So if I run the application now, it doesn't crash. Everything's great. And if I open up this in our DB browser to take a look at the SQL database in the back end and navigate to our books, we can see that new property has been added here, but this time instead of it being null, all of the entries are empty strings. Okay, moving on now, what if we wanted to rename a property? For example, summary may not be a great name for this property. What if we wanted to call it synopsis instead? So in this model, let me refactor and rename that property to synopsis. Then let me fix the initializers parameter to be synopsis too. Then I'm going to go to edit book view where this is used. And I'll refactor the summary property here to be synopsis too. Now our preview data for our sample books will no longer work though, so I'll need to make sure I change every instance of summary used here to synopsis. Well, it compiles just fine, but when I run the app, it crashes. So let's return to our book model. And fortunately, Swift Data provides us with an attribute macro that allows us to change the name of a property as a lightweight migration. All we have to do is, within the attribute, provide the original name, which was summary. If I run the app once more, our app no longer crashes and our data is intact. So let me stop the app and open up our data store in our DB browser. Again, I'll navigate to the book table, to see our data. And I'll see that the summary field has now been changed to synopsis. Perfect. This lightweight migration that Swift Data handles is fantastic. It will handle most of the cases during development as well as production. A complex migration will allow us to make significant changes to our data types or attributes. And in my experience, this is pretty rare, but we saw that case within our enum. But rather than going through a complex migration right now, I'm going to leave that for a later video. In the meantime, these are the kinds of things that a lightweight migration will handle with very little effort on your part. We can add one or more new models, which we'll be doing in the next video. We can add one or more new properties so long as we provide a default value or it's optional as we just saw. We can rename one of our properties. And although we didn't show it, we could have deleted one from our model. Now there are some other things that a lightweight migration will do as well. If you're storing data in a Swift data model in one of your properties, you can assign an external storage attribute and you can add or remove this and a lightweight migration will handle this. As being encrypted, you can assign that as an attribute as well. Adding and removing this attribute is handled by a lightweight migration. And then there's another attribute that will guarantee that each property is unique. 
so you can add that attribute, but only if the existing values are already unique. And this will enforce all new properties to be unique. But when we get into relationships next, there is a delete rule that we can provide as well, and this can be adjusted by a lightweight migration. These changes are all safe and automatic with Swift data, and that's fantastic as we grow our app. To finish off this video then, since we added a new is recommended property to our model, we might as well use it. So let's return to the edit book view and add a new state property for it and initialize it as an empty string. Let me add a labeled content view for this with a text field. But before I do that, let me just change this string here to synopsis. Remember, we changed summary to synopsis. So I'm going to duplicate the author's labeled content view and update the binding to recommended by and change the text view accordingly as well. And then for our action in the update button, we can apply this property to the book recommended by. In the on appear, we can set the value of recommended by to the corresponding property of the passed in book. And then for our changed computed Boolean property, we'll add another or statement to check to see if the recommended by property is not equal to the one that was passed in by the book. Now our preview still works because our books sample books array at index four has a default empty string for the recommended by. If you want, you can go back to the book samples file and add a new property for this example. Now remember when we added that property in our initializer, we added it as the last property, so we'll need to add it in that order in our samples after the status property. So we'll say it's recommended by Stuart Lynch. When I return to our edit book view, I see it's there. Let me test this in the simulator by adding a recommended by to one of our books and verify that in fact it gets persisted to the database. Now it's really unbelievable how easy it is to add and remove new properties in our models with Swift data. We just have to make sure that we add a new property that we have given it a default value or made it optional. And if we're renaming a property, we can always use the attribute macro. We can get into a more complicated migration later on in this series, but I really believe that for the most part, lightweight migrations will meet your needs and your users will not lose any data.